hi students welcome back to wisdom academy youtube channel in the previous video you have learnt about the mirrors formula and the magnification formula so once again i want to recall that before i enter into today's topic so what we learned in the previous class we learned that 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u and if if i recall that you should remember the sign convention is very important and today i'm going to give some bit i i'll say it as a trick a small trick to remember that so you remember that all the height of the objects height of object that is h o will always be positive it will not be negative it will always be positive height of image height of image will be positive if the image is a virtual image and it will be negative if the image is a real image remember that if the image is virtual image height of image is positive if it is a real image height of image will be negative object distance so object distance that is u will always be negative isn't it it will always be negative whereas image distance v image distance v whether it will be positive or negative if you recall you will understand that it will be positive if the image is a virtual image and it will be negative if the image is a real image so whenever the image is virtual image distance will be positive if the image is real v will be negative and what about focal length focal length that is f it will be positive for convex mirror and it will be negative for a concave mirror so this is the chart by which you can remember which quantities will be positive and which quantities will be negative to keep in your mind please remember this chart you can also write it in a notebook it will be very important for you when you solve the numericals today's topic of discussion is refraction of light what is the meaning of the word refraction refraction means bending it means bending so bending of light is known as refraction of light so why does the light bend light bends when it enters from one medium to another medium someone can ask me sir why does it bend when it enters from one medium to another medium because the speed of light is different in different mediums right it's somewhere very important thing speed of light is different in different mediums and that is the reason it bends when it is going from one medium to another medium so remember that speed of light is higher in rarer mediums rarer medium and speed of light is lower in denser medium so wherever the speed is lower it will be a denser medium speed is higher it will be a rarer medium so let us do one experiment in that experiment i am having a glass slab i am having a glass slab this experiment most of you will do in the school laboratories so what we do we take a paper on that paper we place a glass slab and then we just mark the boundary of the glass slab after that we take out the glass slab and on this boundary we draw one line like this and then what we do we draw a line like this at any angle at any angle we draw a line on this line what we do we keep two pins like this so what we do on this line we keep two drawing pins and then we place the glass slab back on this position i will repeat once again on a white paper we have kept a glass slab we have marked its boundaries we have taken out the glass slab then on that boundary we have made a perpendicular line and then we made a line uh, passing through this point over this line we have kept two pins at some distance apart then what we do we keep the glass slab back on the paper 
and from this side we view it from this side we have to view it we have to view these two drawing pins and we have to keep the third pin in our hand and we have to carefully place that third pin in alignment with these two pins so i will see those two pins and with the alignment i will place the third pin so based upon the judgment we will place somewhere so suppose it is coming here then you will take the fourth pin and again seeing these three pins in a straight line i'll put the fourth pin once again so the fourth pin should be in alignment with these three pins let that pin go here then what i will do i will remove these two pins i will remove this glass clap and i will join these two pins in a straight line such that it is intersecting the glass slab at some point like this and then at the point where this intersects on this line we will drop a perpendicular like this and finally we will join these two lines what we will find we will find that this line bent here and again bent there this happens due to the phenomena of refraction now i'll tell you what happened technically so previously when the glass slab was kept there glass slab is a denser medium so this medium was a denser medium this medium air was a rarer medium and even here i had a rarer medium right so now when the light ray was passing from a rarer medium to a denser medium since the velocity changed it bent on this side or i'll say if this is normal it bent towards the normal again it traveled in a straight line in the glass medium when it reached here again the medium was changing from denser medium to a rarer medium since the medium is changing the speed of light is changing it again bent but how it bent it went away from the normal so actually the light was supposed to go like this it did not go straight it bent where it went it bent towards the normal when going from rare to denser medium it bent towards the normal whereas when the light ray was going from a denser to a rarer medium it should have gone like this but it went away so denser to rarer medium it went away from the normal so we learned something today we learned that whenever a light ray is entering from a rarer medium to a denser medium it bends towards the normal and whenever it goes from a denser medium to a rarer medium it bends away from the normal now i'll tell you one thing here if you see this ray is known as incident ray and this ray is known as refracted ray again for this point you can take this as incident ray and as refracted ray or you can even say this as emergent ray right incident ray refracted ray emergent ray some places they may also take incident ray refracted ray this is one criteria and again incident ray refracted ray for the second part both are same angle made by incident ray with the normal is known as angle of incidence angle made by refracted ray with the normal is known as angle of refraction here angle r is angle of refraction not reflection angle made by emergent ray with the normal is known as angle of emergence i will repeat once again angle of incidence angle of refraction angle of emergence if you take this line and extend throughout you will find that this line will always be parallel to the emergent ray so emergent ray and incident ray will always be parallel and this displacement is known as lateral displacement so if they ask you what is lateral displacement it is the displacement which the incident ray suffers due to refraction so it is the displacement from the emergent ray of the incident ray which it suffers due to the phenomena of refraction now let us see the laws of refraction so same way like, like how we had laws of refract reflection we will have laws of refraction so the first law is very much similar to the first law of reflection which says that 
in in the case of reflection it was incident ray reflected ray normal here it will be incident ray refracted ray and the normal all these three lies on the same plane what does it mean it means that if a light is coming like this after bending it will go in the same plane it may not go like coming in this and going in this plane it's not possible or coming like this and going in this plane not possible if it comes in this direction it will go in this plane only right so whenever a light ray is traveling it will travel in the same plane that is what is the first law that incident ray refracted ray and the normal lies in the same plane and the second law of refraction also known as snell's law it says that sign of angle of incidence sign is that sign cos tan trigonometric sign sign of angle of incidence to sign of angle of refraction is a constant and a constant is called as mu or it is also called as n in some books n so snell's law says that sign of angle of incidence to sign of angle of refraction is a constant and that is known as mu it is known as refractive index it is known as refractive index now we are going to talk about refractive index refractive index is often represented by the letter n some places you may also see it is represented by the letter mu but most commonly it is represented by n small n so what is refractive index it is a ratio or i'll say it is an index which gives us an idea about how fast light is traveling in one medium or how slow it is traveling in one medium so how i will define refractive index is how slow the light is traveling in one medium compared to another medium another reference medium right so suppose i am writing n of g with a is equal to 1.5 now what i am meaning here refractive index of glass with respect to air is 1.5 <coughs> <coughs> sorry so refractive index of glass with respect to air is 1.5 i said you it gives us an idea about how so the light is traveling in one medium with respect to another medium so here the reference is air so i can say that velocity of light in glass is 1.5 times slower than air that means velocity of light in air divided by 1.5 that is the meaning do you get me why i have divided because it will reduce the value so velocity of light in air is actually c it is 3 in 10 power 8 divided by 1.5 which will give me 2 so velocity of light in glass will be 2 in 10 to the power 8 meter per second so it gives us an idea about how fast or how slow the light is so light is 2 in 10 to the power 8 meter per second how we found that we found that by refractive index of glass in air is actually written as velocity of uh, light in glass by velocity of light in air actually i have written opposite velocity of light in air by velocity of light in glass so velocity of light in air by velocity of light in glass is actually equal to 1.5 so this is what is the meaning of uh, this nga now suppose i write as n uh, suppose i am writing g w and that value i am not writing suppose, suppose i am writing it 2 what does it mean the uh, velocity of light in glass is two times slower than velocity of light in water so what is the meaning here that velocity of light in glass is velocity of light in water by 2 i don't know this value actually so i i, I will not comment on this so if if you put the value of velocity of water, uh, light in water and you divide it by 2 you will get the value of velocity of light in glass so here i can write this term to be velocity of light in water with respect to velocity of light in glass now here we come to uh, a new term They, these two are different things this is this kind of thing is known as absolute refractive index it is called as absolute the refractive index and this is known as relative refractive index relative refractive index now what does it mean absolute refractive index it means that you are finding the refractive index of one medium 
with respect to always air or vacuum whatever you want to say so suppose someone writes refractive index of glass is 1.5 i should automatically understand that they are telling with respect or with reference to air so absolute refractive index is always with respect to air or vacuum whatever you want to say see air and vacuum definitely they are not same but uh, the velocities of light in air and vacuum is comparable that's why i write it like this whereas relative refractive index is velocity of light in one medium to the velocity of light in another medium so once again i will tell you refractive index that is if it is absolute refractive index then refractive index of any medium like if i write n1 that will be equal to velocity of light in air which is generally represented by c to velocity of light in medium 1 so i will write it as c by v or v1 whatever right this is this is nothing but absolute refractive index and if i want to write n12 that will be equal to velocity of light in medium 2 by velocity of light in medium 1 that will be equal to relative refractive index so always this velocity will come first and the this velocity will come in the denominator remember this so here since nothing is written i assume it is air or vacuum you understand this is the concept of absolute refractive index and this is the concept of relative refractive index okay let us see this question Question says that refractive index of water is 1.33. So they have given N of W as 1.33. And they have given the value of uh, speed of light that we already know. They are asking you to find what is the velocity of light in water. This is the question. So we know by the concept of absolute refractive index, N W is equal to velocity of light in air by velocity of light in water. That is equal to C by V W. So this is given to you. This is given to you. You have to find this value. So, what will be Vw? Vw will be equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 by 1.33. So, when you solve this, you will get uh, 2 point something into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. This is the velocity of light in water. So, this kind of questions is frequently asked in the examination and in various places where you have to find the velocity of light is in some other medium with the help of refractive index. So whenever you see refractive index of some medium is written as some value, that means suppose I am writing refractive index of oil is 1.8. It means that velocity of light in oil is 1.8 times slower than velocity of light in vacuum. Right? That is the meaning. So in today's class, what we have learned? We have learned about what is refraction, it is bending of light, why does light refract, with the help of the glass slab experiment, I could tell you what is incident ray, what is refracted ray, what is emergent ray, what is angle of incidence, refraction, emergence and then I told you what are the different laws of refraction, then I told you the concept of uh, refractive index, where I told there are two types, absolute refractive index and relative refractive index. In the next class, we will learn about the lenses and the image formation by different lenses. Till that time, thank you.